Welcome to Firearms Friday, coming to you from the Wyoming State Museum here in Cheyenne. My name is Evan Green. I'm the volunteer firearms historian here at the museum. And we have a uh, great firearm to talk to you about today. When I first saw this monster on the shelf, I thought, this is a joke. Somebody built this as a joke or a display piece or something, but during the research I discovered it's a Chinese wall gun. And that was a thing. The Chinese used these starting in the matchlock era, so back in the 17th century. Uh, and this one probably is from the mid-1800s, 1850, 1860. And in the 1890s, the Chinese had a wall gun, uh, that a single shot wall gun that used a cartridge. So why was this a thing? It was intermediary between muskets and light artillery such as swivel guns. It was took two people to operate it and we've, well, we have a picture of a couple of guys showing how it was done. So it was long range, shot a fairly powerful load. This musket is uh, nine foot long, the barrel is seven and a half feet, the bore is almost a full inch in diameter. So if you look at that picture, I'd much rather be the guy holding it in front than the guy shooting it because you have to think the recoil would have been <laughs> something to deal with. So these wall guns were also used in some European countries and as the name would suggest they were intended as a defensive weapon for a fixed encampment or a castle, hence wall gun. So I want to say that we're going to go down the rabbit hole on this thing a little bit. And I need to make clear that there is no record in the museum files about where this came from, who donated it, how it was acquired, or even when it was acquired. So let's talk about a couple of people from Wyoming history. And I'm going to be, again, very careful to separate the facts from what's my speculation about how this particular weapon ended up in our museum. Let's talk about John Pershing. Who was John Pershing? Well, he was a commander in the Indian Wars and was in charge of some buffalo soldiers, the black troops that were instrumental in the Indian Wars in the late 18th or 19th century. And that's how he acquired his nickname. They called him Black Jack Pershing because he had commanded those black troops. So in 1916, Pershing was in charge of an expedition into Mexico to try and catch Pancho Villa because Pancho Villa had invaded the United States, allegedly looking for firearms and ammunition, and burned the town of Columbus, New Mexico. Mexico at the time was in the throes of a revolution, and Pancho Villa was trying to, uh, trying to take over, or in, at least was in league with the people who wanted to be in charge. Pershing was also the commander of the American Expeditionary Force in World War I. So what's his Wyoming connection? Well, let's talk about another person from Wyoming history, and that's Francis E. Warren. Francis E. Warren was the first governor of Wyoming after statehood in 1890. He resigned that position to become a senator. In those days, senators were not elected by popular vote. They were appointed by the legislature. So he went to Washington as a senator, and he is connected to Pershing because Pershing married his daughter. So Effie Warren was Pershing's father-in-law. And just incidentally, uh, 
the Air Force Base adjacent to Cheyenne is F.E. Warren Air Force Base. So, tragic story, Pershing's wife and three young daughters were killed in a house fire at, in the, at the Presidio in California, and they are buried in Lakeview Cemetery here in Cheyenne. So, that's, that's the connection between Effie Warren and John Pershing. So, what does that have to do with this wall gun? And now we're into my speculation about how this could have happened. So Pershing was the military attache to Japan in 1904 and 1905, which was the period of the Russian and Japanese War. He was an observer at that war, and a sidebar, Theodore Roosevelt, who was president at the time, got the Nobel Peace Prize for negotiating the treaty that ended that war. So Pershing's in Japan in 1904-1905. So this is a Chinese gun, not a Japanese gun. And it's better to be lucky than good because I'm thumbing through online stuff about Chinese wall guns, and here's this picture, which you can see. It's three Japanese soldiers with five or six of these Chinese wall guns that they seized, the Japanese seized, during the Boxer Rebellion, which was 1899-1901. And the Boxer Rebellion was an attempt to expel foreigners from China, and it was pretty brutally repressed. Japan and Russia sent the most troops to uh, the box to put down the Boxer Rebellion. So, again, speculation. The time frame seems to work. There is a Pershing connection to Cheyenne and to Wyoming. It's possible, speculation, that he brought this weapon back with him when he came back to the United States from his tour of duty in Japan. But that's my speculation. We separated, hopefully, the facts from my speculation. So, really interesting firearm. Big, heavy. I thought it was a joke. I was wrong. Uh, it was uh, a useful piece of weaponry in the for the Chinese military. So, if you've got questions or comments or have other ideas about how this might have shown up in Wyoming, put them in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.